Hey guys, check it out. I am here today at the Abate Student Center, just about to go check out the graduate show. So come with me. Nathan Ball! How's it going? This is Manatide, it's a competitive card game uh, designed from the ground up for high level like tournament style play. So I've always been interested in card games and I really just wanted to try designing one for myself. Um, but one of the things that really annoys me is the kind of the randomness in a lot of them, like ones like Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, there's a lot of luck. So I wanted to create one that kind of minimised the luck element, maximised the skill element. So there's um, it's very positioning based, the combat in the game. Uh, so you have to really think about where you play each of your cards. I've got a lot of good feedback. People are sitting down and playing full games anyway, so that's a good sign. Sweet, thanks man. So essentially what I've created here is a narrative framework to help speed up the process of narrative creation and hopefully improve the quality. So essentially, uh, I have a framework here that draws on a lot of different uh, sources, such as the monomyth, the hero's journey, uh, some basic storytelling concepts, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and Russian literacy. literacy. I'm here with Gary, who's experiencing some minor celebrity stats right now, <laughs> because he is the one who has brought K9 back from the dead. Tell me a bit about the project. It's a, it's a robot dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's meant to like map out his uh, environment. So he'll just roam about autonomously, uh, making sense of what he's seeing and like putting it through into an Android app. So it's using like the Raspberry Pi and Arduino and uh, Monster Motor Shield here. So this powers the motors. This is like registering all the sensors. And this is making sense of all the data that's coming from the app and from the Arduino. People have been loving it. Uh, uh, it's been nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone's mad for them. Everyone absolutely loves it. Yeah. <laughs> the squeaky wheel just adds so much authenticity. So much charm. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone likes Kate. <laughs> Thanks man, appreciate it. No worries. Okay, so Jordan Dunn, this is Eknox as the character artist and concept artist for it. Uh, it's just a four player, multiplayer battle game, uh, similar to Overwatch and that sort of stuff. And the whole game is based on character diversity, so we have three characters on the screens at the moment that are all diverse and different, with different abilities, and each one is associated with a planet. So we've got Neptune there, uh, Mars and Saturn as well. So uh, hopefully within three months we'll have all eight models and done. That's awesome, yeah. So each one has a few different abilities. Uh, Neptune has a gun, so it's got a blink effect as well. Um, and yeah, Mars has uh, jetpack, sword, and invisibility that you can use. So it's close combat, um, but it's very fast paced, which makes it quite fun to play. Yeah, so this is uh, basically taking live uh, Twitter data of uh, just like search term Trump and. Uh, so you can see everything coming down, all the tweets in real time, uh, and um, you put them in the bin. But it's all about kind of the uh, change of the project was all about kind of taking live like data and uh, visualising them uh, into VR. So that's basically it. Uh, undertook and organised two serious game jams. Uh, so the serious game jam is the same thing as a normal game jam, but you're making serious games for a uh, client. So here we have uh, two series game jams, uh, one with St Andrews University, uh, teaching people about uh, different chemistry techniques and practices, and then we have the fifth series game jam, which was about the Stepping Up project, which uh, has had the game makers make games uh, to promote uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability, and the WEF Nexus. Hi Jake, Hiya. tell me about your game. Yeah, no worries. Uh, well, I've, my project was uh, based on nostalgia, kind of nostalgia in video games. So I decided to create a, uh, a game myself, which is a demastered version of Crash Bandicoot, basically making it for the NES. 
rather than the remaster that came out last summer. So a lot of it was, uh, I mean, I created everything by myself, all the assets, all the music and everything, but it is based off the first Crash Bandicoot game. People would eat this up. <laughs> yeah, so we've got the Spyro remaster coming out, the Spyro demastered, branch <laughs> yeah. into other games. Appreciate uh, it. Cheers, man. Yeah. Uh, my project is about noise. It's about distorted, horrible, shrieking, scraping, buzzing, whizzing, whirring, whooshing, all these kind of like horrible sounds, things that people shouldn't really like. The whole point was to build basically a kind of, it's a virtual world, it's already geometric and minimal, but all the sound in it is noise, all the sound in it is unpleasant, and the idea was to see if you make a world that is entirely made up of these horrible sounds, maybe they will start to like it or start to see some value in it as a kind of like, it's kind of artistic, you know, you've got noise music and that's kind of the point. It's like, can people start appreciating noise when it's in a video game? So my thoughts were to take the project and take a character who was based on a regal stereotype, based on feminine stereotype, based on personality, and then compare their performances side by side to see which one audience members of our own was most realistic in terms of portraying a 20-something new and like took that, like parts of their performance and had like that as influence for the work. Right, so my project was basically about world building and creating a world for a video game that was very reminiscent of the things I personally love, like Pokemon and Legend of Zelda and Skyrim. So what we have here are like different characters and monster designs. Here is the here is the world map of our world Dundora. Basically, with each character that you choose, so you choose the Finestrian people, you would start up in this realm, a certain area, and depending on which you choose, depends on where you go. Like, to me, it's always been the world of a video game. Like, I play, play Rocket League and play that, but it's always been getting lost in a realm or in a world or in a fantasy place. And that's why I want to kind of relay all the people. I want to show people a different place that you can get lost in. So it's very much like, it's all monster design and creature design and character design. I ended up creating a art book that would be like in the collector's edition for this for this game if it existed, but this game probably will never exist. It's more my magnum opus rather than like an actual game. But uh, yeah, with any luck, it might go somewhere in the future, so I'm not too sure. That's awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, go and check it out. It's on in the Abbotty Student Centre until the 15th of May. Um, some really awesome work. Um, Catch you soon. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank every single person who appeared in the video for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, I really appreciated you showing me your work. If you want to see any more of the work where I can, I have included uh, some links in the description um, to their various websites and things. Please check them out. If you'd like to see any more of my videos, I've included links in the description for them as well. Don't forget to check out the latest drive-through movie and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks guys.